This is a router sled, and I built it to be a slab flattener. If you want to know how I did it, stick around, I'm going to show you how. First thing that we're working on is setting up the brackets that are going to hold the base of the router to the rails. I did a bunch of research online trying to find some Z bracket, and I was hoping for something that was in aluminum and that I could cut down. But unfortunately, everything that I found was either really, really long or really expensive. Uh, the, the size that I did find was like 12 feet long, and I don't need 12 feet of this stuff, and it would just be sitting around. So I went to Home Depot, and I looked in the strong tie area of the lumber department, and I found these L brackets that had some pre-drilled holes. I was hoping I could use these holes, and, and honestly, I used a couple of them, but for the most part, I had to drill all new holes for this. But... I was able to connect the two of these with a couple little screws and then I took my Dremel which by the way I've had this Dremel since probably 1998 I think and I was able to attach the two L brackets with these little uh, screws and a couple nuts and then cut them down and it worked out pretty nicely. Now the one thing I needed to do was figure out the hole pattern and originally I wanted four holes to attach because there are four holes in these bearing blocks and as far as trying to figure out what the pattern was i honestly didn't know how to do it and the best thing i could come up with was taking this piece of paper uh tracing out the holes and then drilling a couple of, of uh template holes through this one by four and use that as a template for drilling the holes in the brackets to then attach the router base onto these brackets so this is probably a good time to mention that in case you didn't know, I am not a genius and I did not come up with all of these ideas and plans on my own. I found a couple of different YouTube channels that I've combined their ideas to put this whole thing together and I'll be linking the, their videos down below in the description if you are curious for some other ways of doing this. Once all these holes were done, we were able to attach the bearing block to the brackets and then we could do a quick little fit onto the rail and make sure everything works smoothly. Once you've done one of these brackets, you've done them all, so it was just a rinse and repeat, and we were off and running. The acrylic was surprisingly easy to work with. The nice thing about it is that it has this protective paper film that's attached to it, and we can actually draw on it. So it was just like working with real wood. We can use it to mark all of our holes, mark how much we needed to cut off. I wanted to keep a couple of pieces of this acrylic to be used later and you'll see what I'll do with that. But then I just ran it through my table saw and by the way this is the first chance I got to use my crosscut sled and it worked beautifully. Super happy with having these uh, tie downs and keep my fingers away from everything but it just cuts like butter um, or it actually cuts like wood but it works great. So anyway once we were done with that we could start working on figuring out where all of the holes were. And I was able to take the base of my router off and just use it like a regular little template. I drew out where all of the openings were and where all of the screw holes would be where we would attach this. We also wanted to figure out where the center mark was so that we could take a hole saw and actually cut the hole. Obviously I made a mistake and we figured out where the middle was and then we could just attach it to my drill press. And with the drill press, we could drill in all of the holes where the screws would be to attach onto the base of the router. Since we have the drill press out, we can use it to drill the holes in the brackets, which will be the attachment point for the acrylic base of the router. Now that we have the holes in the brackets, we will drill the corresponding holes into the acrylic base for the router. I also decided to do a little bit of a countersink in the acrylic so that the screws would be nice and flush with the top of that acrylic. We found these little grommets that are typically used to attach screws to a piece of wood. These little teeth aren't needed for the acrylic. In fact, they would have broken the acrylic. And I thought about dremeling them off, but I figured out that I could just bend them back and make them flush. You get a little bit of tension between the acrylic and the bracket itself without putting too much pressure on it.
With the quarter inch holes, these fit perfectly inside of the acrylic. I'm not sure exactly what you call them. I'm calling them a grommet, but I mean, I guess you can call them whatever you want. I'm sure there's a official name for it, but it worked perfectly for our use because you get that quarter inch hole in the bracket. You get a quarter inch hole inside of that acrylic uh, with the little bit of a countersink. And then when everything goes through, it, uh, it, it fits nicely. The screws actually do hang a little bit low, but they're not so low that they get in the way of the slab flattening process. So it worked out just fine. Everything attaches perfectly, it's nice and tight, and nothing is wiggling around, so pretty happy with the way this all fits. Now it's time to take our hole saw and cut a hole in the middle, which is where the router bit is going to go through. This is a two and a half inch hole, and we started with a pilot hole right through the middle on this drill press. And then we took our hole saw, cut halfway through, flipped it over and then cut the rest of the way and that prevented anything from chipping or having any kind of real tear out and it worked great. Took a little bit of sandpaper to smooth things out but this turned out way better than expected. My apologies, but for the next minute of video, I somehow lost all the sound on this. So we're going to just hear my voice for a little bit. Uh, we were able to finish up some of the countersinking of the holes that will be used to attach to the router. I'm using three quarter inch long stainless steel screws with a tapered head. And it fits perfectly inside of that countersink. Let me tell you, there are a few things more satisfying than peeling away this protective film off of the acrylic. I'm very glad that I chose a piece of acrylic versus a piece of wood. It gives you a lot more visibility into the work that you're doing. And overall, it's just a much cleaner look. Now that the protective film is gone, this is the first chance we get to inspect the acrylic. And it's perfect. No chips, no cracks. And that just made me really happy. It's also time for our final assembly. We finally get to put all the brackets and the bearing blocks onto the acrylic do a quick inspection make sure everything's nice and tight and that nothing's loose and that we didn't crack anything when we tightened everything down but this stuff is really durable and with that we get to attach the acrylic to the base of the router same idea you can go pretty tight on this you're not going to crack anything and it stays nice and snug and flat Now that we have the router attached to the acrylic, which is attached to the brackets, we can do our first run on the rails. It takes a little bit of lining everything up, but once you do, it is very smooth. I was super thrilled to see that we're getting close. Now we're going to take those last two pieces of acrylic that we had cut off at the beginning of using this acrylic, and these are going to be used to keep the rails at a consistent width apart from each other. So the router sits on the base and then the base sits on the brackets and then those brackets are going to run on those rails. And what I don't want is for the rails to start binding by getting too close or too far apart. So we took these pieces of acrylic and we're going to use these to attach to the rails and keep them consistent from one side all the way to the other. And yes, if your question is, is it still satisfying pulling this film off? The answer is 100%. All of the holes line up perfectly. We have two on each side and they were cut to line up with the existing holes. So once we attach these, the only thing you have to do is give it a little bit of a bump and then everything screws together perfectly. With the entire router rail assembled, it's now time to attach those rails to the perpendicular rails, which will give us our multi-axis movement for the sled. The holes on these bearing brackets line up with two of the holes on the router rail sled. I thought about drilling two more holes for each of these bearing brackets, but I figured it was overkill. 
Because these are machine screws, everything is really tight and it's not going to move at all. Testing out the movement of this multi-axis sled for the first time is oddly satisfying. So the next thing I had to do was figure out how to attach all of this to the table. I thought about drilling holes in the tabletop, but then they would be permanent and I didn't want to do that. So the next option was to attach the rails onto a piece of 2x4. The problem with that is that the 2x4 is going to move and then I'm afraid that it's going to start binding. So the alternative that I came up with was to cut 8 inch strips and attach it to different sections of the rail. This allows for movement of the wood and then I don't have to take anything off of the 2x4s. I can just leave it on the rails permanently and then whenever I want to set things up I just have to clamp it to the table. So we used the existing holes, took some deck screws that wouldn't go through the 2x4 and attached it in four different locations for each one of these 2x4 sections. Once we did that, we could clamp everything to the table. This is the reason why we took the time to plane the 2x4s to the exact same size. That way, once we cut everything, it was the same level and the clamping allowed everything to stay on the exact same plane. I'm not going to lie that all these clamps make it look a little bit like a Frankenstein, but it's effective and it's not permanent. Finally, we get to put the whole thing together. We take the router base and attach it to the rails and give it one final test. All right, so this is the last step, which is to put this flattening bit into the router and we will test it on that piece of cherry that's sitting over there. It's actually the piece that I cut off the end of the project that I'm working on next. So this is a great time to test it. It's the same thickness of the project that I'll be working on and just to make sure that everything works and that I don't have any issues. So let's get to that. I should have put this bit on the router before I put it on the rails. But I think I can figure out, if not, I'll just take it off real quick and then redo it. But uh, I, think it, I think it should work just fine. All right, so we have everything all set up. I've got the bit set inside of the router. And then what I did was I took this three quarter inch MDF to raise things up a little bit. And I secured it by just clamping things. I didn't want to put a bunch of holes in my table. So I clamped it on this side. I clamped over there up against the end and then I also put in another piece right here to just kind of hold the actual piece of work in place so it doesn't move around. And then I've got it clamped up here and I've got a couple of cleats, one there and one there to hold it in place and then everything else is secure up against the rail here. There's plenty of movement so I can actually get the bit all the way across. The one thing I do have to be careful is that I don't go too far and then end up hitting the rail with the bit but I think I'm in pretty good shape there. And then I should be able to cover all of it. Again, this is just a scrap piece that I'm using to test things out and see how everything works. But I'm pretty excited to see how this turns out. So let's get moving. Oh, and then one more thing is, if you notice what I did was I actually set the height of the bit to be at the uh, absolute lowest spot that I could find, which is right there. So I'll be able to come across, I don't know if you can see that or not, but I can come across and then once I get a little bit further in, it'll actually stop uh, right there. So you can see it kind of catches the slab. So we'll lock that in place when we come down and we'll test it out and we'll just go all the way across. So this will be a good little piece to test everything out on and uh, hopefully this all works out.
Now you don't need to worry about these lines. You can't even feel it. In fact, they'll come out with a little bit of sanding, but that is perfectly, perfectly flat. And you can see the difference from right here to right there. You can see that little line there. That is so smooth. I love it. All right, folks, well, that's pretty much it. As you guys can tell, I am pretty excited about this project. It's not even a real woodworking project. I mean, it's tools for woodworking, but I didn't actually get to build anything that was actually like a piece of furniture or anything like that. But the fact that I was able to put this together and it worked out as well as it did, I am thrilled. Now, if you guys know, I, I did mention in a video that the parts and pieces that I got for this, um, I basically stole, borrowed them from a couple of different YouTube channels. I will put a link to their YouTube channel channels and to these videos that I got this all from down below in the description. So if you want to check those out and then I will put a link to all the parts and pieces that I used for building this. Um, the router itself, I'm not going to put a link to. It's just an old 25 year old router that works perfectly and um, has not left me high and dry yet. But the rails and the plexiglass and everything else that I used here, I will put links down below so that you can uh, purchase these if you want to use the same idea that I did. Now, the one thing to keep in mind is any links that I put down below, they are affiliate links, which means I get a couple bucks if you use those links. If you don't want to use my links, feel free to do your own searches and go off and, and purchase those. No obligation whatsoever. I'm just trying to disclose to you all that I do use affiliate links and um, I will get some commission off of that from Amazon um, if you purchase it from them. But other than that, I mean, it was a super satisfying project and I'll, I'll be honest with you, I'm I'm way more excited about this project than I probably should have been uh, considering that I didn't really build a piece of furniture that I'm going to use. And I probably won't use this jig very often, but when I need to flatten a slab or do anything like that, this is perfect. And I am, I am thrilled. I, I, in case you guys can't tell the smile on my face, I am super excited about this project. And, and uh, I hope to get some usage out of this other than on this very next project. Speaking of which, I've got a couple other projects that I'm working on right now. I've got this table back here that I got from my church that they wanted me to refinish. So I'll be working on that. I've got a friend of mine coming over this weekend and she wanted me to help her build some nightstands for her master bedroom. So I'll be working on that as well. Those are two projects that I'll be working on. And then my own personal project is the slab that's sitting back there. Um, it's basically the other piece. This is the part that I cut off and was just my test piece for this particular video. But that slab is part of a project that I'll be working on to build a TV stand for my upstairs bonus room. So that's my next project and I will be using this slide for that. So super excited. Again, I built this and I built this uh, table saw sled um, or this crosscut sled, sorry, this crosscut sled. Um, both of these were basically for this project that I'm doing for me, but I will get tons and tons of usage out of it. But anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video um, and I hope you guys enjoyed watching it as much as I enjoyed building it. So if you like this video, don't forget to like, don't forget to subscribe if I've earned your subscription. And if you want to be notified of future videos, don't forget to hit that bell and we will see you on the next one. Have a great week, everybody.